right, we have the Pac-Man 10 game arcade collection. I purchased this from Office Depot. Let's go ahead and get them out of the plastic prison. Show you what you get. First and foremost, let's go ahead and take a look at the controller. We've got a D-pad over here on the left-hand side, six action buttons on the right-hand side, a little picture of Pac-Man, and yes, he is legitimately just a sticker on top of the controller. Um, that's probably gonna wear off pretty quickly if I had to guess. We got start and select in the front, as well as your life of your battery indicator. And then we've got our LB and our RB buttons up top, the on and off switch for our wireless control, the micro USB power adapting port, and then we've got our battery cover. Open it up, put in two AAA batteries, and then you can play wirelessly. The Pac-Man Collection HDMI console itself, power button on and off there in the front. We have two USB ports for player one and player two. Then around back, we have a micro SD card slot, which I'll show you how to add your own games to this system, because yes, you can add your own games. Then we also have the HDMI, of course, to connect it to your television, and then your power for your micro USB as well. Comes with a micro USB cable for your power. It doesn't come for the second one, so you'll either have to put batteries in your controller, or you'll have to provide your own second micro USB cable to use this with that USB cable. It also does come with an HDMI cable, and that's it. First, let's talk about the quality of the control, because, well, it's uh, it's very cheap quality. Uh, I will give them props, it does ergonomically fit nicely in the hand, but it is a bit of an eyesore. It looks like a straight up boomerang. Early prototypes, uh, they had some Sega Saturn S control designs. Uh, obviously, probably for licensing reasons, they had to change it. Uh, aesthetically though, this is just, um, it's, it's pretty hideous. I will say the D-pad, D-pad is nice. Shoulder buttons, doing okay. It's these front facing six action buttons. These are just, oh man, these leave a lot to be desired. Not a fan of these six action buttons. And I know you're scratching your head going, why would I even need six action buttons and shoulder buttons to play Pac-Man? Well, you wouldn't, but that's because Arcade 1UP had the foresight to add the ability to expand these consoles and add games. So if you're buying this specifically for just these 10 games, you know, you'll be able to play Pac-Man pretty well with this D-pad. Your action button, like so playing Galaga, Galaga 88, uh, you're not gonna have the best experience with these action buttons up front. However, you know, there are workarounds to that and I'll show you that towards the end of the video. All right, so I got my controller plugged in via the micro USB cable and the perks of this being an HDMI device is that I can plug it into my capture card and show you exactly what it looks like to play. So we got this nice little menu. I'm gonna scroll left to right, very simple to do. We're gonna pick our game, we're gonna hit the start button. Now this is where things get a little weird, at least to me, I find it kind of non-intuitive. So we look at the screen, it shows you the configuration, how to play this game, select, start, and use the D-pad to control Pac-Man. Doesn't tell you coins or anything like that, just says select, start. So we'll hit start again to get past this menu and go on to the game. Now the game starts up. Instinctually, I thought, you know, I'll just hit start again and I'll start the game. If I hit start, it puts more coins in and it creates a two-player game. If I hit select, it creates a one-player game. So slightly non-intuitive the way that is set up, but you do look at the instruction manual. It does show you a picture showing that select is for one player and start is for two player. But, you know, again, whatever. I just, I guess I'm being nitpicky, but I just thought instinctually start would be to start a one-player game. So anyways, we're gonna hit select. Begins the game, get our classic sounds and everything using our controller, and again, we're just using the D-pad. I like the D-pad on this controller, I like the ergonomics of this controller, I just don't like the action buttons. That's, that's my biggest complaint about this controller. Anyways, all these games, I'm just gonna kill myself real quick, all 10 of these games save your high scores, which is great, so even after you power off the device, unplug it and everything like that, it does save your high scores. To back out, you're gonna hold that select button for five seconds. gonna bring us back to the main menu and then we can change games one cool thing that I found out is if you're not a big fan of this controller and potentially you have other controllers lying around let's see go ahead and unplug it I've got a generic Microsoft Xbox one controller here find my USB cable I'm going to plug it into the device and then Lo and behold, as you can see, I'm using the D-pad and it's moving 
and we're going to be able to play a game. So we'll just go to Galaga. I'm going to hit the A button. Nope, nothing. Start button. There we go. Yeah, my bad. Start button again. Select button to play one player. Learned my mistake there. And now, if again, if you don't like that Pac-Man controller and you've got some other USB controllers, obviously I can't test every USB controller out there to verify they work, but the ones that I've tested sitting around my house, they have worked. So I'm using this Xbox One controller and able to play these games. It's much more, you know, ergonomically friendly and I like the buttons and everything. I just like the feel of this controller. You know, it doesn't really give me any advantages like rapid fire or anything like that and in these 10 built-in games there's no settings or configurations I can't change scan lines or add scan lines or you know change the aspect ratio you're just getting the arcade ROMs so hold the select button we're gonna back out of this and then we're gonna get into the real meat and potatoes because we're gonna talk about how you add your own games all right let me show you just how simple it is to add your own games to the HDMI consoles now first and foremost you're gonna need a micro SD card of course not supplied. However, you're going to get your micro SD card. You're going to put it into your PC or Mac. Works both ways. Doesn't matter. You're going to open up the root of the folder. I've already cleaned this one completely, so we're starting fresh. We're going to create a new folder in the root of our SD card, and we're going to title it Game. Then we're going to go into that folder, and now this is where you can do one of two things. You can drag and drop your game ROMs that you legally own into this folder, or you can subcategorize them by console. That's what I've done, and for expeditious purposes, I've already had and loaded up my game ROMs and categorized them by console. I'll drag and drop them into the game folder here. And it's being slow. Where's my Super Nintendo? There it is. Alright, so I've got my games in here. These are all games I legally own physical copies of. Key thing is, none of these are going to be in zip file folders or anything like that. These are just going to be the raw ROM files. And once I've got them all categorized and in my game folder, I'm going to take my SD card out of my computer and then we're going to put it into the back of our HDMI console. Put in our micro SD card into the back of the HDMI console with it powered on. As soon as we do, brings up this menu asking local storage or micro SD card. Local storage, of course, is the built-in games on the Pac-Man collection. So we're going to use our controller, toggle over to the right and select micro SD card and hit start. Now the cool thing is, again, you don't have to use this included Pac-Man controller or whatever controller comes with your HDMI console. I can use the Xbox One controller or other various USB controllers that I've tested thus far and it works just the same as it does on the built-in game. So we've got our submenus here. I can go up and down with my D-pad, go into the folders by selecting A, it brings up my games, no frills, no thrills, no pictures or anything like that, just the game titles. But let's go ahead and test it out real quick. Go down to Mario, hit A. For whatever reason, if I want to back out of my menus, I'll just hit the B button and it goes back a folder. Here we go, we got Mario started. Absolute best Mario game, in my opinion. Great thing is, you don't have to map your buttons or configuration of the controls whatsoever, um, which is really great because there is no way to do it. So, um, the great thing, again, is these all work right out of the box on the standard Pac-Man or whatever HDMI controller came with your system. However, uh, it would be nice if we had some sort of way to remap the controls. A uh, couple of quirks I did notice, so like when I plug in the Xbox One uh, controller and started playing with it, worked great. Uh, for Sega Genesis games, like what I thought would be the C button, uh, was never the C button. It was always like the right bumper, which was a little odd, but it was still playable. But anyways, I think it's pretty neat that we get to add our own console games onto this. So to back out, I'm going to hold the select button just like normal, hold it down for five seconds. Back to our menus. Again, I get the B button, goes back a folder, go to the Sega, test out Sonic 2, select it with A, loads up our game. We should see that iconic Sega come by. There it is. Sega. That got me in trouble many of days in my youth, trying to play this secretly late into the night before I was supposed to go to school. And god darn it, every time that Sega th came on the screen, my parents would wake up and come yell at me. 
but as you can see, controller works great. Spin dash real quick. And I'm very impressed with just how simple it is to add your own games. Literally, it's just drag and drop, and you're good to go. I wish there was some extra settings, like we could mess with, uh, you know, aspect ratio, scan lines, and um, the button configurations, things like that. But um, for forty dollars, I mean, you're getting what you pay for. Um, forty dollars is a, a good deal for the arcade games themselves and the plug and play feature. If you don't have space or room for, you know, arcade one up or something like that, and just how simple it is to be able to add your own ROMs is very impressive. Let's go ahead and back out of this. So we'll test out another game. Super Nintendo, go to it. Again, like I mentioned earlier, Super Nintendo works well except for games that have Super FX chips. So I've got Super Mario World Yoshi's Island kind of highlighted there because it doesn't work. We'll go to, you know, Final Fight, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Yeah, we'll just do a quick, I'll get beat at that real quick. This is definitely not my ideal controller to play Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> It'd be a testament though. Like I said, the D-pad, I'm not not against the D-pad, it's the buttons I don't like. So we'll see if I can throw your standard special moves. Yep, okay, so Hadouken, Shuriken. Yep, okay. So again, D-pad works great. Good enough to pull off the special moves in Street Fighter, and I'm not paying attention, but oh well. So we'll back out of this game. Yeah, I don't care about you, Zangief. I'll fight you another day. Back out, go to Game Boy Advance, test out Mario Kart. There we go, Super Circuit, single player. Yoshi, he's my guy. Quick race at the Mushroom Cup, come on. And I was really impressed with the Game Boy Advance. Um, it runs smoothly. It's, it's kind of frustrating that we can get some really good Game Boy Advance games playing, but we can't play those Super Nintendo FX chip games, but historically those have always been notoriously difficult to emulate properly. Alright, Yoshi's doing good. Hit the drift way too hard there. Oh yeah, I'm invisible, which is both good and bad. That ghost power-up's always weird. Like it's cool to be invisible, but it's also very difficult to drive. Oh, somebody's gonna get red red shelled. There you go, princess. Alright, we'll back out of here. I'll spare them, you know, the fatality of another red shell death. Oh yeah, there we go, Defender. So this, this was my jam. This Atari 2600 was the first system I ever had. And Defender, I played just tons of growing up. I had the Atari blisters inside, you know, the crook of your thumb. That was, that was my life. Just blasting away. Still a notoriously difficult game, but I had fun regardless playing this. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think for the $40 price point. The controller, not the best, but it can be replaced and switched out. The fact that we can add our own ROMs is very cool and very impressive, and to me, kind of really makes up that $40 price point for having, you know, not, not the greatest controller. The fact that you don't have to use it, and you can add more ROMs and play lots of extra games, I think that's pretty much a win. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. It really means a lot.